happy Monday. It's Crystal, of course, with Rolling Out and Reality Check. And I hope you guys had a great weekend. We are coming into a slightly gloomy uh, week, but hopefully everyone's week is off to a great start. I'm excited about today's guests. They are actors from uh, Easter Ray's very highly acclaimed YouTube series titled King Esther. Welcome, Rohan. Thank you. And LJ. Ma'am, how you doing? I'm good. I'm good. Thank you guys for joining us today. Thanks for having me. So I've been hearing about the show. I've seen some things on um, on social media. I had a chance to actually watch the first episode, and I gotta say to you, Ron, you do an amazing job as the lead character, King Esther. So Thank clap you it up, so clap much. it up for you. Thank you. Um, it is a it is a very um, like emotional. It seems I watched the first episode. He, you, and I talked a little bit before we started about. Um, the series and the series actually focused on a trans woman's um, kind of like journey to finding herself. Yes. Right. And um, the first episode, I'm not gonna lie, it really, it like, it really was hard to watch because she makes some decisions um, to, I guess, give herself a better life that seem heartbreaking. Yeah. So can you kind of speak a little bit to that? Yes. So Esther is a black trans woman mm -hmm. in 2005 mm -hmm. uh, trying to pursue an acting career. Uh, she lives be below the poverty line and uh, she has to engage in survival-based sex work. Mm -hmm. uh, so um, for anyone out there who doesn't know what that is, it's um, something that most or some trans women engage in because we're not afforded the same opportunities uh, as in jobs and mm -hmm. and just you know plain respect um, in society. So that's how some of us make our money. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That, and I asked you because you because you kind of relate to the character and just the feeling of you know maybe feeling displaced in certain areas. I do wonder though, is that why that is such a popular thing? Because there are a lot of people that don't have education or maybe may not have money. Um, but in the in the first episode, it's it this obviously is a very degrading experience, right? Yes. And so I wonder why do you think, just your perspective, that happens so often um, in this community? Because that's it 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 definitely you know bothered me because it definitely seems very um, it had to be a hard scene to shoot. I'm sure um, it definitely seems just like. Nothing that you would want anyone to have to go through. Very dehumanizing. Right, exactly. So I'm wondering why this, and I think this is the case with, with anyone, trans or not, that's in that type of work. Um, but I'm just wondering why do you think that happens so often with this community? Um, to circle back, I think that's a great question. Um, some you know, trans women or other folks who engage in sex work, mm -hmm. uh, don't necessarily find it dehumanizing or degrading. Okay. Um, so just to clarify that, but for some, because they do have aspirations to do other things mm -hmm. and they are talented and they are intelligent, they just don't have the access and right. they don't have the resources mm -hmm. because uh, of society's you know viewpoint and outlook on us, mm -hmm. you know, as trans and queer people, mm -hmm. uh, th they don't see us as human, and that's where the 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 problem lies is that. If they can just see past, you know, how we show up in the world and how we identify, mm -hmm. they can see that we're more than capable of doing the jobs of everyone else. Mm -hmm. So that's that's really why it's, yeah. you know, that's our last resort sometimes. Yeah. Uh, was this, you, we talked a little bit before, like I said, about how you uh, came into this and, and it's got to be amazing working or being able to be associated with Issa Rae and everything that she's been so just um, able to really show people a lot of different perspectives of life, right? Right. Um, talk a little bit about your own journey because you grew up very similar from the same area as yes. your character. So how have you been able to kind of take some of your own experiences, maybe growing up and finding out who you are to be able to, to, to show that in your character? Um, well, I have to say thank you to Dewey Gerard, who is the writer, creator, director of the show. Mm -hmm. Um, this is his beautiful story and his beautiful mind that came up with this project and I'm forever grateful mm -hmm. uh, to be a part of this and help him bring his vision to life. Uh, but for me, I grew up in New Orleans, mm -hmm. um, born and raised, and I, I've been a performer my entire life. 
uh, mostly dance and music. Okay. And uh, to come to this role, it was, I had just started my transition mm -hmm. and I was, you know, working on my debut project, a uh, music project and editing my video and, you know, working in a bar at mm -hmm. the time. And um, a mutual friend of Dewey and I is now um, Chuck, who's his lawyer, mm -hmm. uh, pitched the project to me over, you know, some time. Mm -hmm. And um, after several screen tests, it, I got the role mm -hmm. and still floored by that, but I'm very grateful. Mm -hmm. um, but just growing up as a queer person in New Orleans, which is a very religious and a very homogenized and a very heteronormative city, mm -hmm. um, even though it's the Big Easy and it's very, you know, colorful and mm -hmm. very fluid and very freeing, um, depending on the, the family dynamic that you have and that you grow up in, mm -hmm. it can be very challenging. Right. Um, I didn't have that, you know, free and colorful upbringing, um, just like Esther. So I guess, I guess I would consider us living like parallel lives, mm -hmm. her on paper and me in real life, um, that influence everything and help me to bring her to li her story to life from, from the page. So, yeah. Well, that's that's awesome. So you you do you feel like you're getting a chance to kind of share that, live vicariously through your character, Absolutely. share that? It's it was very a very challenging and triggering process mm -hmm. because there's a lot of trauma that I haven't personally dealt with in my own life, uh, with my family and mm -hmm. with you know past lovers. Um, so it but it's also very cathartic yeah. and and therapeutic to you know discuss these topics and to to basically heal myself through mm -hmm. this character nice very nice well that's what art is supposed to do absolutely if you're just joining us again this is reality check and we're having a conversation with two of the two of the characters from king esther new youtube series uh that's actually out now on i think episode three i had a chance to watch the first episode you do an amazing job and that brings us to lj LJ, you are, we didn't get a chance to meet you in the first episode. Yes. But you're showing, you'll be showing up later on. Right? Yeah, I actually uh, had my appearance on the second episode. Okay. Just a slight, smooth, little sneak peek. A little snip, you yeah. slid in. A little, little taste. <laughs> <laughs> so tell, how did you get connected with this project? Actually, I found it on Instagram. Oh, wow. I was just searching and I was looking for a little small independent work okay. and I came across the synopsis mm -hmm. and the character breakdown. Mm -hmm. And when I saw Hurricane Katrina, I was like, yo, I, I experienced a little bit of Hurricane Katrina. Okay. So that caught me the first time. Mm -hmm. And when I read that this was about, this was about a trans woman trying to pursue a career in the entertainment business, that caught me as well. It was very interesting. And yeah. plus I have friends that are trans. Mm -hmm. So I went ahead and send, send myself in and Got the audition and got called back. Got called back. Yeah. So tell us about your character. He's uh, he's uh, the boyfriend to... Yeah. More like the hero, I would say. Hero, okay. He's more than just the boyfriend. <laughs> okay. But uh, I play the role of Damien. Okay. Uh, I label him as Esther's safe place. Mm -hmm. He's a long lost friend from back in the days before Esther made her transformation. Okay. And they end up connecting together again and they make this beautiful... Uh, friendship, connection, and also Esther becomes a safe place for Damien. Mm. Because right now he's going through this, um, in the series, right now in the series, he's going through this uh, confusion, also this curiosity of who he really is. Mm -hmm. So he's actually in the mix. So by Esther finding out who she is, I feel like if it put him in the pocket of actually taking that chance to live his own truth. Wow. Okay. Mm -hmm. I have, I was going to ask you because, um, I think there's obviously there's so many different conversations that, that our social culture is having right now right. about trans and, and, and there's so much, um, that I think is misunderstood on both sides. Right. So I wanted to ask you coming in as a, as a straight male, yes, ma how did, how are you able to kind of help I guess uh, bring additional understanding on that end because I know that that's been a contention point where a lot of a lot of uh, men that would consider themselves straight feel uncomfortable mm -hmm. or are um, in some ways very negative and can be hateful. How how do you think you've been able to be like someone that understands, especially having 
friends that are trans as well mm -hmm. um, and kind of bring some light to men that may not understand or may not, they may not understand how their behavior is seen as negative. Uh, well, I kind of experienced it myself with one of my other closest friends mm -hmm. when he came out when we was in high school and I was riding with him the whole time. So I felt like it was my duty to mm -hmm. tell his story as well and represent nice. for them as mm -hmm. well. But by me doing it, I feel like it'll give people a different understanding of how humanized we all are. And all of us have most of the same qualities. Most of us want the same thing. Mm -hmm. And I feel like this series is really important because from what I've been reading and the, the message I've been receiving, a lot of straight, trans, queer, whatever, they relate to Esther in some type of way. Yeah. So I feel like her story is telling almost everybody's story. Right. Right. Well, that's a great, a great point for us. We're going to take a, a quick break, um, but we want you guys to come back. Obviously, this is a conversation that needs to be had. An amazing uh, piece of work, and these two are doing a great job. We're going to ask them some more questions about the series and, of course, how you can get tuned in when we come back. Don't stay. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. This is Encrustal Reality. With customizable streaming TV from Xfinity, watch the most free TV shows, hit movies, and live sports on the go. At home, access Netflix, YouTube, and Pandora right from your TV. And with the X1 Voice Remote, just say it and see it. Show me HBCU. With Black Film and TV, watch your favorite college entertainment, HBCU football games, and much more. Xfinity. Simple, easy, awesome.
reality check and we were talking with two of the characters from King Esther, a groundbreaking new series that is on YouTube currently. If, you're, if you haven't tuned in yet, you can tune in now. It's only three, three episodes in, so you can tune in and get caught up for the next episode that's coming out. But before we went to break, um, I w we talked a little bit about the fact that you actually grew up in New Orleans, so yes. you had a little bit in common with the character and just some of the things that you went through. What are some of the things that we can expect? So like I said, the first episode, I was like, Esther, Lord, you, <laughs> is she okay? Um, but you see that, um, to LJ's point, people really connect when someone is working hard and really has a dream and there's hope and there's, um, you know, inspiration. I think people can connect with that regardless of your walk, you know, in life. So can you talk a little bit about what we'll see your character go through over the next few episodes? Yes. So Esther is experiencing familial discomfort mm -hmm. uh, between her sister, uh, Ruth, and her brother, King. Mm -hmm. uh, she is experiencing uh, sexual abuse uh, from you know one of her Johns mm -hmm. um, that she engages you know uh, with survival based sex work mm -hmm. uh, she is experiencing discrimination uh, at the acting studio because they don't see her for her talent mm -hmm. they just see her for you know how she shows up in the world and how she presents um, and they're not very nice mm -hmm. uh, she's also experiencing love for the first time mm -hmm. uh, with Damien. Mm -hmm. The savior. He her the savior. hero. Yes. <laughs> Which absolutely. we don't see a lot. <laughs> yes, we don't see that a lot. Mm -hmm. So That's true. Uh, in this story, we get to see a, a, a wide range of emotion and a, a huge dynamic of the complexities of a person mm -hmm. that just happens to you know be a part of the trans experience. Absolutely. How important do you guys think that it was for this to be set in the backdrop of New Orleans? Um, I think that when I when I heard that when I read that I was like wow because it's kind of like you know with with the way our culture is we move on so quickly from things and we don't realize that when things happen it's trendy for a while but the pain and the you know despair and just people putting their lives back together is still very very real you right. know for them even though it may no longer be trending um, what did you think about that do you think that was important to kind of speak to the story. Um, I think because we all, in some ways, and especially Dewey, he experienced uh, Hurricane Katrina, mm -hmm. and that was a very pivotal moment in his life, so he wow. wanted to set it against that backdrop, and, and it brings an extra level of tension, an extra mm -hmm. level of um, urgency, and an right. extra level of that, you know, that what's to come. And I think that was such a beautiful contrast to the trans experience because that's our life on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. What about you? Do you think, and, and I just want to ask you even more about your characters, but did you have to kind of get, did you have to, cause obviously you had the accent already, right? <laughs> so yes. did you have to kind of familiarize yourself with the, the, the surroundings and the culture? Cause New Orleans has its, its own. It's distinct. It is, it's, it's very distinct, very yeah, distinct. I really did. I had to watch a lot of Cash Money interviews. <laughs> I love it. Juvenile, uh, when I went to New Orleans, I made sure I ate every time, Absolutely. every second Absolutely. I was there. Yes, And yes. so just from there, I bodied New Orleans. <laughs> Cash yes, money in the food. Yes. He had it on lock. <laughs> right. That's awesome. That is awesome. What do you guys hope that people, because um, I, I love the fact that you mentioned it being cathartic. Yes. And even, you know, sparking conversation. But um, in, this, in, this, in these times where you see people talking and there's so much conversation that's negative or polarizing, what do you guys hope that people will get from this series and be able to take and that maybe, you know, it can possibly help or heal some other areas? that it is a human story. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is trans specific. Yes, it centers a black trans woman. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's in a specific time period and a, a specific place that not many people have experienced, mm -hmm. but it is a human story that Esther is fighting for a dream and a place in society to be heard and yeah. seen and accepted and loved and affirmed mm -hmm. just like everyone else is. Absolutely. That was that was like beautiful. It <laughs> was like a perfect answer. What do you think, Elder? What do you want people to take from just for even just from your character and being able to? I think what you said earlier was really key. Being able to be a safe place, and that could translate to any friendship, any relationship. 
um, being able to be a safe place for someone and allowing them to be that for you as well. Well, I always tell people, don't be content with the cocoon. You know, mm -hmm. be yourself, live your truth, flourish. I promise you, like, you will see things more clearer. You, you won't have to be holding back when you know you have so much to give. Mm -hmm. And I feel like, you know, as men, we always tighten ourselves in. Yeah. And we don't give, we don't give our all. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that damages. And we don't even know it. A lot of times, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. And so, this character, I hope it put in every young man mind that it's okay. Be you. Be true. Live. Yeah. You know? And love is love. Don't fight the connection. Right. If it's real, let it be. That's, that's beautiful. I like that, too. That's... <laughs> Real con and, and we don't think of lo love is uh, love is powerful and love is really what can fix every all of this. Exactly. But that's another yeah. example of hashtag Black Love right. that we don't always see all the time. What is next for you? Because you are uh, this was your first role. It's a really big role yes. to be your first <laughs> role. Congratulations on that. Thank but do you, you? What do you want to do after this? What do you look forward to? Are you still doing music? I am. I'm currently working on my debut EP. Okay. I'm really excited about <laughs> that. I have no dates up on the SP. <laughs> um, but uh, now I've been bitten by the acting bug, so mm -hmm. I would love to tell more nuanced and niche stories mm -hmm. and, and highlight more people in my community. Right. Um, I just did a film uh, executive produced by Keanu Reeves mm. and uh, written and directed by this amazing black trans woman named Tourmaline mm -hmm. uh, about Mary Jones. Uh, she was a black uh, abolitionist and you know sex worker who mm -hmm. also you know engaged in survival based sex work in the 1830s. Wow. And she uh, lived in New York in Seneca Village before it, came cen beca before it became Central Park. Mm -hmm. And she freed a lot of slaves. So mm. that movie wow. is coming out in 2020. Mm. Wow. Congratulations yeah. on that. Thank That's you. Huge. Now let people know where they can find King Esther and if they want to get involved in the conversation where they can go to do that as well. Everyone can follow King Esther on all social media platforms at King Esther series, uh, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and they can watch all the episodes weekly every Thursday on Issa Rae presents, uh, Issa Rae's YouTube channel. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Anything, what about you, LJ? What do, what do you have? Well, what do you have coming up next? Uh, well, independent film called In the Moment just dropped on Amazon Prime that okay. I'm starring in. Okay, congratulations. And I'm also writing more films with my friends, and we just we're just working. Right. I love that. I love the fact that you know there's there's a few years ago there was this huge shortage of of content, you know, mm -hmm. especially from African American creators. Mm -hmm. And within the last, I think there was that whole big Oscar so white, and there was there was like this this conversation of us not being represented. And in that short period of time, since then, there's so many different avenues and opportunities, and and young, talented creators like yourself that are coming and, and saying, you know, we're not going to wait for those opportunities. We're going to create them create them ourselves. Right. What did you guys think about um, seeing Tyler Perry's studio and seeing the the mm. <laughs> For me, it's so inspiring because that's something that a lot of us never thought would happen mm -hmm. and never thought that we would have the, the visibility and have the opportunities. So I congratulate him and I'm amazed at, at what he's doing and I think it's a beautiful thing. Yeah. The thing that caught me that it's on the land of a Confederate military, military base. base. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. And they, their job was to keep us slaves. Yeah. Right. And now yeah. one black man owns it. Mm -hmm. and I feel like I can build a car then. Right. And, and, it's, and, it's, right. and it's one black man that owns it, but in, it's a place where we can tell stories. Right. We can continue to push the legacy, can continue. So it's almost like that legacy is being destroyed by this new one that's being created. Exactly. Absolutely. Beautiful. And absolutely beautiful. And, and, and very much like what you're, what you're doing with your character. I applaud you for being willing to talk about the, and the the hard things because I know that this is something that feels like a hard conversation, but I believe with things like this, with programs like this, with people like yourselves, that eventually things will change and it will no longer, you know, this then we'll be on to the next thing. Right, exactly. <laughs> we'll be on to the next thing. You guys, please check out King Esther. 
Um, follow them on Instagram. There'll be more on rollingout.com about the series. Thank you guys again for coming Thank out you. For having and us. agreeing to the conversation. We really enjoyed it. Thank you for tuning in as always. This has been Crystal Jordan with Reality Check on Rolling Out, and we will see you guys next week.